So it's about to be 6.30 right now. Should I just start talking at some point? We're live. Hi. So we live? We live? We're live? We live. How you doing? Hello. Hi, my name's Joshua. That's right, Joshua Emerson. I'm here coming from an undisclosed location in Capitol Hill. You guys are here in the virtual world. Uh, welcome to the Sacred Voices open mic. That's right. It's virtual now, okay? It's not my fault. Don't get mad at me, all right? Uh, uh, we're going through a pandemic. It's really crazy. Uh, uh, but you know what? There's no excuse to not try to, to, to learn how to create, to, 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 to find the truth, to find the expressions that, that, that the future generations are going to be able to call upon, to be able to take something inside yourself and, and, and make art about it, inspire people, get inspired. That's what we're here to do. Very glad you're here tonight. Yeah, let's get this off right off the back. Uh, really annoyed about this. How long after you graduate high school can you wear your letterman's jacket? That's my question, because uh, I'm pissed. All right, 10 years long enough. I know it's a nice jacket, it's cold outside. This is super comfortable. I dropped $250 on this, you know, 10 years ago. I can only wear it while I'm in high school. That's stupid, that's dumb. If I saw this jacket, like at Buffalo Exchange before they got sexist, like I'd see it, I'd be like, yo, that's a dope jacket. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna cop that jacket. And, and, and you know what, like I get, I get the idea where it's like, like uh, you're trying to, to to live out like you peaked in high school, but I lettered in cross country. I I didn't. That's not a peak. That's a mountain. <laughs> that's not a mountain. That that that's a hill that I had to run up every day after school. All right, it's bullshit. I'm wearing the jacket. I'm wearing the jacket. It's super warm. Super warm out there. Uh, those of you just joining in, we're at the Sager Voices Open Mic. My name is Joshua Emerson. Sometimes I like to do comedy here in Denver, Colorado. I'm Navajo, you may have heard of us uh, from the movie Wind Talkers, <laughs> starring Nicolas Cage. I, uh, I don't like when Hollywood does that. I don't like when Hollywood uh, makes a movie about natives, but then they star like other people, like the movie Pocahontas, who's the male lead in that? It's not that cut couple of them, no. Nah. No, nah, it's, it's John Smith. I'm gonna tell you right now, John Smith a bitch, all right? <laughs> John Smith, little suspect, don't like that guy. You know who John Smith was? Uh, Voiced by Mel Gibson. <laughs> and you can tell the way John Smith looks at that grandma tree's big ass nose, you can tell he's anti Semitic, all right? <laughs> yeah. John Smith is, John Smith hates Jews, got that out of the way. He's also trying to get with a 16 year old Pocahontas. That's hell of a suspect. Uh uh. I'm glad he doesn't appear back in the second movie. John, John Smith hates Jews, he, he likes teenagers. John Smith's the Crystalia. Uh, uh, of explorers, all right? Let's cancel John Smith. I never want to see another John Smith Disney poster ever again in my life. Screw him and his stupid ass blonde hair. Uh, who wears only the breastplate of an armor? That doesn't make any sense. Just like trying to show off the guns? You're gonna wear armor and show off the guns? Get out of here. Jonathan sucks. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> name's Joshua, I said that. We're at the Sacred Voices open mic. I said that is virtual. I said that I'm wearing a Letterman's jacket. I'm actually regretting it now because I'm sweating, uh, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> I uh, yeah, we got creative expression. We got the Patreon going on. Uh, uh, Sacred Voices. Uh, got 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 the Venmo. Uh, get get Venmo.com backslash Sacred Voices. Uh, we got the website Sacred-Voices.org. Uh, we got the radio show. We we got workshops. We we got all sorts of things. For you, uh, I, I, I do comedy, uh, other people do poetry, other people do music. You're gonna see some of that tonight. I, I hope, we'll see. I, <laughs> this is uh, turbulent times for sure. Uh, see, I, do, I, I think I have one more, one more, did I say John Smith is a goober? I did say that, all right. There's, is there anything else I wanted to talk about? I think, oh yeah, I don't like, I don't like when, uh, when, when people appropriate native culture in weird ways. Like, why is it always the whitest women that are named Dakota or Cheyenne? Bullshit. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna name my daughter Caucasian, see how you like it. That's as far as I got with that joke, okay? It's very dumb. Um, you guys wanna hear more dumb jokes? I got, I got a, a bunch of them. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, 
That said, this one last, last time, uh, I, I went on a date with Esma last week, but it got cut short. She wasn't into it. All right, thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, here's my here's my impression of a Southern Baptist preacher crowdsourcing this gender change operation. All right, can I get a ha, man? Okay, that's uh, that one is uh, for the adults in the room. I'm like a Pixar movie in here. Okay, <laughs> it's on multiple levels. I'm a child, but I'm an adult. I'm a child, but I'm an adult. Uh, do we do do we have any performers in the lounge? Huh? Huh? I, I, that does not look like it right now. I, I'll freestyle all day. Who wants to get on? Uh, who wants to get? I, I, yo, yo, Bree, Bree, getting excited to go. Go ahead, uh, Bree, uh, unmute yourself. How you doing? How you doing? Hello. What's up? What's up? Yeah. How you Hi. doing? <clears throat> uh, I'm tired. I really want water, but you know. Yeah, water's life. You gotta, you gotta go water. find some water. This is yeah. true. What, what sort of things do you wanna perform tonight? Um, I got two poems. That's about it. I got two poems for y'all. Yeah, uh, are they about anything uh, pertinent or, or particular? They about being black. That's about all the poems that I write is being black. Sure. sure. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, yeah, no, I'd love to be black one day. You know. Uh, <laughs> Help we all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna throw myself on mute. Let us let us know the wisdom. Ooh, cool. Hi, y'all. Uh, my name is Bree. I feel like most people have seen my face if you've been to Sacred Voices. Um, this is my bedroom. Amazing, wonderful, love it. Um, I got two poems for y'all, and then I will be done. The first poem is If Survival Was a Race, and I wrote this for survival. Um, so, Octavia tried to warn us so grab a handful of seeds, braid it into the closest nappy head and send them on their way. I have no means to outrun this. I'm fighting this head on. I'm gonna make them work for my demise and make damn sure they never achieve it. I ain't dying anytime soon. I'm gonna live unapologetically black and carefree. Uncle Jimmy was right. I don't belong here, but where if any will accept the power this skin has, I wonder if I still have time to apply for my passport. Better yet, is it too late for me to catch a flight to the next moon? I want to be somewhere where existing shouldn't have to feel like a myth. I'll carry a pack of scissors, better yet a machete, and that's word to mama ja. A long leash is still a leash, so I cut ties to a place that never wanted me to succeed. If the way of survival is by any means necessary, then I'll feed my golden neck, ebony, jet black, onyx, crested dragon with rainbow iridescent wings, the bones of my oppressor. Yeah, I got a dragon. Yeah, my dragon is blickety black, just like me. Yeah, I got magic and an imagination to fit it too. Ain't that the most powerful thing a black body could have? I have no means to outrun this. I'm fighting this head on like all those that came before me. I got that soul, that juice, my uncle's swaggy fresh presence. I don't need a moment, I need a lifetime, like my lifetime, like 1.5 billion lifetimes. Life never times itself, so I will. Pat Parker once said, the first thing you do is forget I'm black. Second, you must never forget I'm black until remember that this black body was here, this black body existed, I, black body survived and had no means to outrun it because I couldn't catch up anyway. And that's, I realize I'm just going to perform one. That's it. That's all. That's all. I liked it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, scared me with the machete. But... <laughs> <laughs> all right, when did you write that? When? Yeah. Um, I wrote it about a month ago, and I'm still workshopping it. So. Yeah, for sure. I talked a little bit about the process of that. Having an idea and then writing some stuff down and kind of workshopping it. So, um, I feel like I have a really cool idea in my head and then I like write it down. Most of my ideas happen at like three o'clock in the morning when I'm not supposed to be up. And so I like roll over and I like write down my things and then I go back to sleep and I'm like, oh, let's work on this. Okay, let's do this. So. <laughs> Yeah, no, it is that. Like, 
I so I have a lot of ideas in my notebook that haven't been fully fleshed out. How how like uh, litigious are you about going back to rounding back to those ideas and sort of working them out? Um, I feel like I go back to the ideas that work. If they don't work for like three tries, then I'm just like, ah, oh, whatever, fuck it. <laughs> you give them three tries, and then 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 then. This, I don't like you anymore. Get out of my life. That's yeah, right. but then the universe is like, remember when you wanted to write this? And I'm like, dang, universe, you write. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Past Breeze is probably pretty interesting. <laughs> Cupid Breeze is probably pretty interesting, right? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's weird. It's weird, like, developing the relationships. I mean, because time's not linear. Where am I going with this? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for your poem. Uh, very beautiful. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Take, take the mic back. How you guys doing? If you guys don't know where you're at, this is uh, this is a uh, it's a basement. It's a basement in Capitol Hill. Uh, but where you're at, you're you might be in your home. You might be uh, on your phone in your car. You might you might be at McDonald's in, in line to get a spicy McChicken because they're a dollar uh, eight. You know, a great deal for for, for diarrhea. I think. Uh, the, <laughs> my name's Joshua. I'm hosting this uh, open mic. This is a Sacred Voices open mic. Yeah, this is uh, this is it's December. I can't believe it. It snowed today. It's the first time that it feels like winter to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, for finally, I, I feel like 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 the outside looks like my insides. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> uh, well, Spring Catholic Academy. I you guys just popped on. How you doing? Is there anybody there? Is there somebody at the pulpit? Somebody's at the pulpit, but you're on mute. <laughs> it's a long way to go to turn off the mute. <laughs> I can describe what's going on. There's there's lights. Uh, there's a black backdrop. Uh, the the video moved just a little bit, so I think they got into the phone, to the computer. I'm guessing it's a computer. Let's see what else can I? Uh... Uh, there, it looks like a drum. Is that is that like a powwow drum? Our name. That's when. Whoa! The first how are you doing? Go up. Okay. Yeah. We'll go right now. Hurry! 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 <laughs> There's a little little kid scurrying about. He went through that door first. <laughs> you can see that on the camera too. It's on the camera. <laughs> so. Well, Wellspring Catholic Academy, I'm ready for you guys. Whenever you guys want to start, I'm very excited after seeing all the, the nervous energy. Very oh no, I'm so sorry, thought we were muted. We are, we're ready uh, to go in just two minutes, if that's okay. Well, just two minutes, that's right, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can stretch for two minutes. I got, I got, I got time like that. You, you got <laughs> jokes like for two minutes? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we, we had some nervous bathroom energy happening. Oh, I've been there. Oh girl, say no more, say no more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I remember, like, there's something with the stomach, too. Like, uh, I don't get afraid to talk in front of people anymore, but my body does, if that makes sense. My <laughs> ego is there. My body is sometimes <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I a couple times. <laughs> how, old are, how old are the performers going to be? Um, so here at Wellspring Catholic Academy, you're going to have fourth and fifth graders presenting their original poems to you tonight um, about a topic that they found very relevant to the world today. That's exciting. World yes. So, very, yes. Very good. Yeah. So this is their first like open mic experience. And so we're feeling a little nervous, but I think they're ready. Sure. And then who's behind the, who's behind the, uh, the screen right now? Who am I talking to? Oh, I'm Molly Newcomb. I'm their teacher. Molly Newcomb, everybody. Yeah, first of all, everybody, can we just get a virtual round of applause for Molly Newcomb? Uh, uh, second of all, can we get a round of uh, applause for our fourth and fifth graders right now? Woo. Okay, here comes um, our first poet, Adrian. <laughs> I'm 
Mass Ten Thrilled by Adrian Martinez. People are not understanding that the reason for this pandemic that the person like you or me, and that the, their skin color when they're born, so don't make fun of them. They're just a human being, and please stop being mean to the homeless. I know they don't have a home, and stop wasting your money on guns and bombs, and buy the homeless some food and water. Please stop. Please stop. Black Lives Matter. White Lives Matter. Brown Lives Matter. Please stop this drama. Our world is going crazy, so please understand. So love people, even though they are not the same color. So love people. So love people. I was feeling a little nervous. Can we get some love? You are beautiful. Bye. Roses are red. All lives matter. People are cheating one another badly. Please, no. No one should be treated like this. Everyone is beautiful, black, white, and brown. You are all beautiful. Black people are getting killed because of your skin color. Brown people are getting called illegal immigrants. There is so much drama in the world. There is gun violence, which is just violence. In, in the world, people are getting threatened with knives. Please help our world. This is not right. No one is illegal. Brown is beautiful. No one is illegal, and brown is beautiful. And brown people matter. I mean, do you remember how Moses said, Let my people go? He told them that because the Pharaoh made people slaves to build pyramid and kingdom. Moses got sick of it. He stood up for people's freedom. That's what brown and black people are doing now. Brown are being called immigrants just because they were born in Mexico and crossed the border. So what? All lives matter. Everybody just wants their rights. What if they have a family in this country? They haven't seen them in a long time. Are you going to stop them? Why would you do that? I say, let our people go. My family is okay, but I worry about them, even my cousin in Mexico, Pueblo, and California. Who cares what skin color we are, we all matter. Even if we are black or brown or white. We can do this just like Moses said to the Pharaoh. Let our people go. Let our people go. Let our people go. Healthy Your Guide by Sophia Harris. The bad things are taking over our earth. We need a rebirth. Let hope guide you to faith so, so we, we can feel safe. Gun violence, racism, and so much more is causing people's hearts to be sore. Let hope guide you to faith so, so we can feel safe. Because of this hatred, people start accusing, stealing, and doing illegal things. Let hope guide you to faith so, so we can feel safe. People start feeling depressed, unsafe, scared, and a lot more. Let hope guide you to faith so we can feel safe. 
Celebrate each other's differences, no matter what the distance is. Let hope guide you to faith, so we can feel safe. Plant seeds of kindness, so people can spread their brightness. Let hope guide you to faith, so, so we can feel safe. Use your voice to stand up for what's right, so we can unite. Let hope guide you to faith, so, so we can feel safe. Talk to others so we can be brothers. Let hope guide you to faith so we can go safe. By Sophia Travis. Look at what we're doing to our own world. We're hurting people. We're hurting people. That's not why God put us on this earth. We started with the Emancipation Proclamation. Then we went to I Have a Dream. Now racism is continuing into 2020. We can't let this keep happening. And we're calling people illegal now. Are you crazy? You just like the attention. Do you like this drama? Think about what you're going to do before you do it. Let's talk about gun violence. One of my family members died. That's family. That's family. If you're out there, think about what you did. I hope these words are unforgettable. We have to stop this. How? Together. See, set, wedding! See, set, wedding! See, set, wedding! I am tired of this hatred by Sophia Fatigue. I'm tired of this hatred. I said I am tired of this hatred. Come on, people. What is this hatred? People are killing. People are bullying. I hear people crying. I'm tired of this hatred. Everyone matters. We only have one world. Let's treat people like people. I'm tired of this hatred. We are stronger, united. Show people some love. Stand up for what's right. Show some compassion. I am tired of this hatred. There is violence. There are shootings. Father, Father, help us. I am tired of this hatred. Be helpful. Be kind. Show empathy. Shower love. I'm tired of this hatred. I'm tired of this hatred. People have selfishness. People are making fun of others. This is not supposed to be happening right now, whether you are black, white, brown, or mixed. I'm tired of this hatred. People are calling other bad names. Our world is going down in flames. Everyone matters. I said, everyone matters. Where is the love? Talk to people who are different. Brown is beautiful. Be yourself. Love one another. I'm tired of this hatred. Hey, Sacred Voices, that's uh, a wrap for Wellspring. Wow, oh my goodness, that's great, great job. <laughs> uh, yeah, can we get the kids back on stage? Uh, yeah, and then can I just like ask them some questions, see how they do? Sure, we would love that. He asked if you guys could come all back up on stage and he's gonna ask you a few questions. All right. So it's just a little quiet, so I might repeat your question to them. That sounds good. Uh, yeah. First of all, well done, all of you. I just want to give you guys a round of applause. Fantastic. Some things I picked up on race. I was wondering, this is uh, for anybody. Uh, in, in terms of, of, of right now, I mean, you had the George Floyd protest that, that went nationwide, uh, really spurned a, a large discussion about um, sort of systematic uh, uh, racism in our institutions, and then, so I just sort of wondering uh, for, from a child's perspective how that how that's filtered down. So, so I guess my question is just to, to make it a little bit uh, more digestible. 
Um, like, like how, how are they feeling about race? Like, like, like it sounds like a, there's a lot of unification message, a lot of coming together. Yeah, so he, your, the question was, friends, how are you guys feeling about race and racism? Does anyone want to take that question? Pia, how are you feeling? Um, I think really I'm loud, feeling, my friend. Um, I think I'm feeling um, kind of bad for people because like, people are being killed um, and like people are like not liking other people, even when black people are not liking white people because like, they're like, to one another. Yeah. Um, what did you want to, what message did you want to send with that poem, Pia? Um, I wanted to send um, that I think we should be happy. Hmm. Anyone else thoughts on um, racism, Sophie? Um, so <clears throat> I feel like it's kind of sad for like all the people kind of connecting with what Pia said who are like getting shot and things like that. And like I feel like it's really really sad because like only like 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 kind of like in our poems it was like all about like the black people and like how like they go through it and basically. Mm -hmm. Sophia. Um, like uh, like my thought of racism is like um, like is like like there's so much conflict in the world and there's like so much drama that happens every day and um and like we need to stop this because like it just keeps happening and happening like like i said in my poem like we started with the emancipation proclamation like it started there and it stopped and then it came back and it stopped and it came back so mm -hmm. like we have to stop this like once and for all yeah, it's, yeah, absolutely. Stop the cycles. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's true. Uh, uh, so, so one of my favorite things about children is the idea that that the next generation is going to be better than my generation. That that we sort of try to make progress. Uh, everything. So, in terms of like when you guys are out, uh, well, I guess uh, it, it's hard to have recess now. But in terms of like when you were able to play sports and have recess, and you see somebody. Uh, um, like bullying or doing something antisocial, how do you guys handle it? How do you guys like handle or what do you do about it when someone, you see someone being bullying or left out or not being included? Um, Maribel? Sometimes I include them. Include them, Pia? Yeah. Um, like, I also include them and like, maybe I'll ask them like, what game they would like to play. Mm. Sophie? Um, so yeah, I can include them and like, I feel like sometimes it's hard for other people to ask if they can play with you. So maybe I'll also ask them if they, if, if, ask them if they want to play with us. Yeah, ask so, them if they want to play because sometimes it's hard to ask to be included. Totally. Uh, Sophia? Well, we kind of learned about this, like when someone's feeling down or if they're um, like playing alone, like we can maybe go ask them like do you want me to play that game or should we play another game or like uh what do you want to do yeah i think those are all great answers i uh yeah i, I, I like we get inclusion and unification that, Definitely where we want to work to. Uh, so I, I understand that that some of the, some of the Sacred Voice people has came out and, and you guys had a little workshop out there. I was wondering if you guys could tell me how that went. So how did it go with Tabitha, friends? What did you what did you think, Pia? Um, I think she's really nice and she's funny. <laughs> and like she uh, made up examples. Mm. Like, yeah, Tabitha kind of freestyled on the spot for us a couple of times, and our, my friends really liked that. Um, mm -hmm. Sophie? Um, like, yeah, she was really nice and funny, and I feel like she also showed us that, like, um, that we can use our hand motions, um, like when she was playing, and she, like, just said, like, there she can, like, she'd be like, you went, like that, and she was like, or she was like, and I felt like she kind of showed us, like, our hand motions also express how we feel sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that those gestures, right? She ha helped you kind of develop those because they can express your feelings too. Anyone else? What do you think of your workshop with Tabitha? Yeah, Sophia. Um, I love her like examples. Like she showed us some videos of like. Mm -hmm. I love the 
Well, oh, you felt more inspired by the examples that she shared? Yeah, no, I really, I really enjoyed the yeah the use of like callback. I felt was very powerful. Uh, I, I felt uh, <laughs> the people slamming the pulpit always very <laughs> evocative, you know. <laughs> yes, yeah, so uh, they wanted to grab the audience. This is attention for sure. Yeah, no, I think it's great. And then uh, I'm getting a better look. You guys look amazing. This is great. You guys are stunning right now. Just in terms of uh, someone, how do you know how to tie a tie at that age? Just amazing. Did you do that yourself? Did you do that yourself? He says, yeah. Okay. I don't believe you. <laughs> Mom's calling him out back here saying it's a clip on, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, well, Wellspring Catholic Academy, you were fantastic. Big fans. Uh, one more time. Is there anything else you want to say? Is there any message that you guys want to want to get out there to the public? Yeah, Sophia. Stop, stop the hatred. <laughs> any other messages? Uh, can we say thank you to Sacred Voices? Thank you, Sacred Voices. Woo! Yes, thank you so much, you guys. I'm gonna screen record that for sure. That's right. That's, <laughs> on, the, that's on the next trailer for sure. <laughs> my, my phone is acting up. Uh, cool. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I was a kid once. You know, it was great. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> I ate a lot of fruit roll-ups. Uh, I didn't have to pay rent. You know, I, honestly, I miss it. That's why I act so immature. Is I, I miss. I want to get back to the time when I was worry free, uh, and I had a pool in my backyard. You know how expensive it is. Pool maintenance, very expensive. That's what happens when you grow old. You realize that all the cool things around you they cost money. It's like, <laughs> I shut up. Anyways, my name is Joshua. I'm hosting an open mic right now. Uh, Sacred Voice is gonna fix my. Fix my phone. Uh, our next performer, he's gearing up. Big fan of this guy, Malta. Evans Explosion, how are you feeling right now? You are still on mute, my guy. I'm feeling great. I'm happy to be here. Feeling great? You. Awesome. I'll quit. I, I'm, I'm going to let you get right to it. I'm going to throw myself on mute. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm very excited, bud. Hello, Sacred Voices. Thank you again for having me. Um, give me just one second. So just like a kid from Wellspring Catholic um, Academy said, we need to have compassion. We need to have compassion for, for really everybody. And people who usually don't in, in our society, people who don't have compassion, who we don't have compassion for a lot of times is substance abuse users. Oregon was the first state recently to decriminalize drugs. And the question really is, when will the whole country? They call me Evans Explosion because I try to explode different stigmas and stereotypes. And one that I definitely want to do is that of what society says is a drug user. Now, um, this new song of mine is to promote safe substance use education in hopes that one day people who have problems won't be locked behind doors with people who are problems. And this music video also was just dropped yesterday. Hope you guys will check it out. Um, probably with adult supervision, but this song is called, It's Not The Drugs. I'll be damned that last pill just kicked in. It kicked in. I need to sit down or I might touch the ceiling. The ceiling. I'm on some mushrooms and some molly too. I did a lot, I know I might have did too. But that's not why I said that I love you. They doubt themselves, don't let them doubt you. Oh, I wish you'd see it's not the 
Sacred Voices. Um, hope you guys have a great holiday. If I don't see you before the new year, and um, I'm about to blow in uh, in three, two. There's have an explosion. You just blow. That's yeah. Uh, diversity of content here at the Sacred Voices open mic. That was <laughs> I. <laughs> I, uh, you know what? Recreational use of drugs, uh, it, it's, a com it's a conversation for sure. Uh, <laughs> but I just, I just, I like, I like where, where like the performance is before with the, with the kids and then, and then we're having these uh, uh, complicated conversations through the meeting of music. That is a diversity. Where else are you going to get that? That I I'm proud right now. Semper Fi, man, that's great. Oh man, me. Thank you, Evan Explosion. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I again, I'm gonna say this over and over again. Uh, I, I think I think now the times we're living through now are so important. Uh, they're so weird. They're so there's a there, there's a lot of angst. There's a lot of trauma happening right now, and and and. And that's and that's when 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 things are, are created. That's what they're created out of, right? Uh, I, I know for comedy, it's very common to say tragedy plus time equals funny, and I think that's true for a lot of different disciplines in terms of being able to take complicated times and, and turn into something beautiful and say say something you you, you feel is true. Um, there's a lot of ways to do that. Uh, we like to encourage that here at Sacred Voices. We do we do workshops uh, all over town. We uh, we do a radio show. We do this open mic, and and, and if you want to be a part of that, if you want to be a part of fostering the next generation, you know, like Wellspring uh, Catholic Academy, and then students all over the New American School, uh, think about maybe maybe sign up for our Patreon or. Or you, you know you can uh, you, you can hit us up at Venmo. Maybe attend an event. Maybe tell your friends. Maybe maybe you have a friend and you know they're talented. You know they have something to say. Encourage them. Encourage them to go out to, to try to produce something. To try to create something. All right. It's it's important to have artists. Um, and that's not it's not it's not just rhetoric and it's not just 
um, like self-importance. Uh, uh, it's not just being self-importance. It's not just ego. I think, and I, I really believe this, that, that a society uh, has to have all these different parts for it to, to function well. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. Uh, love everybody that's watching for that reason. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, looking for our next performer. JD, how you doing? I saw you you jumped in uh, to the... Uh, into the zoom can you uh, go ahead and turn off your uh, uh turn off your mute see if i how you doing hey man i, I actually i should uh, what are your pronouns uh, um he him oh hi, so yeah hey man how you doing um i'm good how are you just chilling with my wife just Is that your wife watching all the good stuff going oh, on is it strong do you give it a do you give it a a recommendation? Yes. I would. <laughs> <laughs> right away. I would him to watch Terrace House, which is a Japanese show on Netflix now, but it's a very good show. So I would recommend people to watch it. Hey. I've been I've been watching a, a Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Uh, oh, that's on our list. It, it's it's strong. I, I so I watched it when it when it first came out, and then they didn't have all the seasons. And re, I'm doing a rewatch. It, it holds up. I'm a big cornball. Like I'll cry at anime. It's mm -hmm. tough, uh, but yeah, yeah. That, that's cool. That's, I'm glad that you guys watch it. You, so like when you guys watch shows and like somebody else watches episodes ahead of you, does that make you mad? He, he is too slow me for me. I'll finish like five seasons in a day and he's like, I'm on episode two. And I'm like, no, <laughs> we can't do this. I'm not going to wait for you. One piece this year, which is like up to a thousand episodes now. It's an um, anime. He is still on what? He's like way, 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 way uh, behind me. I'm pretty far back. <laughs> yeah, okay, what, what, what sort of uh, work are you going to do for us? Um, it's gonna be some spoken word. I write hip hop music. Um, but we're just gonna have it come out as a poem. So yeah. yeah that, sounds, that sounds beautiful. Is, that, is there any uh, uh, else you want to say to set it up? Oh no, is this me? Are we going? Or are we just? Oh, you live, baby girl. You live. That's okay. right. I'm gonna throw myself on mute and uh, and let you do your thing. Very right, cool. Let me do my hair real quick. Just now? I'm not ready. <laughs> okay. You have to. Hi, Bree, by the way. Hello. What up, what up, what up? Long time no see. Yeah, good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm weird. All right. So, um, <clears throat> what's up, everybody? My name is JD. I go by JD the MC. It's my rapper name. Um, and I'm about to release a new song called Civil War. On the 20th, it's going to be out of December. So definitely check it out. Um, I'll drop my Instagram. And I can drop a link to my SoundCloud. Um, but music's on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, whatever, Poison you pick. And yeah, the song encompasses a lot of things. I write to vent. Um, so yeah, it should be a good song. Glad everyone's here to, to rock it. So I'm just going to go. Cool. Civil War. <clears throat> Sometimes I feel like I'm at war with myself. I don't know what's good for me. Like I'm at war with my health. I'm sorry. I'm just blanking because I don't have the music. I'm going to pull up the notes. You got this. Oh, thank you, baby. Bum, 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 bum. All right, cool. Civil War. Sometimes, part two, part two the remix. No. Sometimes I feel like I'm at war with myself. I don't know what's good for me. 
like I'm at war with my health. <clears throat> I know I shouldn't be afraid to ask my homies for help, but I just zip the lip and fasten the belt. Sometimes I feel like I'm just stuck with this duality, my mind filled with thoughts of peaceful and calamity. A silent night for me would truly be insanity and self-destruction is a hell of a drug. Some call me a thug, a bird who need to catch me some slugs, a student, teacher, peacekeeper, I check all the above. Like the government, I hide my demons under the rug. I'm just a lost boy who need me a hug. Somebody give me a drink, give me a joint. Pass that oil for my lungs, I will anoint. Faith the size of a lentil. If you hear my words and think they dumb suspenseful, then like a dull pencil, you missing the point. Sometimes I feel like I'm at war with myself. Sometimes I feel like I'm at war with myself. Sometimes I feel like I'm at war with myself. Sometimes I feel like I'm at war with myself. A little hook. Sometimes I feel like I'm at war with my neighbor. I treat them like myself, but that's not doing any favors. Love is a flavor we never did savor. Now America is hurting, but don't want us to save her. <clears throat> the world is on fire and the nation's on lockdown. We got the people marching from the ghettos to downtown. When we stand up for what's right, we get knocked down. Kneel to the powers that be, homie, not now. Cause they don't excel the people. They just wanna extort us, bomb our neighborhoods and don't even warn us. Just kick us to the street to do a sweep. Don't keep the peace, just squeeze the heat like hand warmers. So when we finally shoot our shot, it's a and one. Release the lunatics, hold our leaders for ransom. They want us with our hands up on the floor and some sounds of a civil war, the new national anthem. On top of that, we treat our kids like some lab rats, send them back to school rocking their hazmats. They say it'd be one love if the churches could have mass, but since Trump won, the flag's been chilling at half staff. You know what? We're all to blame. We all got our vices, consume all the ads, but don't take advices get fed by devices that speak divisive and we have the poorest of people paying the highest prices. So to what conspiracies are you listening? But choose to keep the true story a mystery, sitting down comfortably watching your TV screens, playing American reruns, repeating history. Sometimes I feel like we're at war with ourselves. Sometimes I feel like we're at war with ourselves. Sometimes I feel like we're at war with ourselves. Sometimes I feel like we're at war with ourselves. And that's it. Thank you, baby. <laughs> I'm clapping too. All right. Thank you, Joshua. <laughs> yeah, man. A lot of complicated themes in there, man. I love it. Yeah, yeah, do you, yeah. Do you put it to like uh, to to music and stuff like that? Do you, yeah. Do you like, yeah, so it's it's a it's gonna be it's a rap song, and I have it to a beat. I have a written out hook, and then there's a bridge after the second verse. Um, and yeah, it's coming out. It's kind of why I wanted to hop on this open mic just to like meet people, but also let people know that this song is coming out on the twentieth. Mm -hmm. um, just follow me on Instagram or follow my SoundCloud. No, say 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 the socials again, man. Let me let me get them hacked. Yeah, so Instagram is JD the most chill. Twitter, JD the MC12. Um, and then if you want to find me on like Spotify or Apple Music or SoundCloud right now, look up Empty Sentiments um, by JD or Loverboy by Loverboy by JD, and you can listen to those two tracks right now. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want everybody that, 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 that that's watching this stream right now, all right, in about 17 minutes, I want you to go put that on. Just, in fact, when you go to sleep tonight, I want you to go to the SoundCloud. I want you to put it on. You can even put it on beautiful if you want. And then go to sleep. Just let it, just let it run throughout the entire night. Just get those streams up. That's oh. great. That's, yeah. uh, that's amazing, JD. JD, the most chill. Are you the most chill? Or are you try, like top 10? I try to be, I don't know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thumbs up, man. And and then uh, who who's uh, yeah who's the lady? That's that. Yeah. So this is my wife, Kiara. Kiara. That's a great name. 
Thank Where'd you get that name? Yeah. Kiara Chavez. Yes. I have also performed poetry with, um, sorry. It's been so long. Is it Bree? Oh, Sacred, sacred Voices. Sacred Voices. I'm sorry. It, it was like, <laughs> but I've also done poetry and it was such a great experience. I hope soon it can go back to in person, but this is really cool to see it be virtual right now. We have a ton of little furry babies joining us, and oh, yeah. we all give it tons of thumbs up. It's amazing. Yeah, a lot of positivity in the chat about it. Yeah, they want you to come back and perform. Yeah. He told me, and, and JD and told me, and I'm like, I can't make a poem right now, <laughs> but Just I just come back. Come back. I'll, Do we'll, it. Come I'll, back. She'll be back. I will. He's inspired me. It's, it's so much, so much amazing art in this space. So thank you all for your voice. It's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to leave on that. That's a very positive note. And, and, and <laughs> the thing is, is when a conversation goes positive, that's when you should leave the conversation. So thank you guys so much. Uh, yeah, uh, JD, the most show. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Listen to his music. It's great. Um, yeah. Uh, my name is Joshua. Uh, I'm Navajo. This this next guy I'm thinking about bringing up is also Navajo. He, uh, he, uh, is he back on to the Zoom? Is DJ uh, Douchebag back in the, the chat? Turn yourself on mute if you're, if you're there, Joshua. His name is also Joshua. I'm not like talking to myself in the third person, uh, but I am talking to myself. So I think so. So is that, is that, is that better? If you're hearing noises in the background, it's my friend. He's Jewish. Uh, he can't help himself. Uh, I'm, cooking, I'm, I'm cooking bacon. He's uh, cooking bacon, so I guess he can't help himself. Uh, <laughs> smells good. Jew. Yeah, you're a great Jew. Uh, see, uh, <laughs> Juan, how you doing? Maybe, maybe I'm going to move to move Juan Garza. Go ahead. Uh, that's JD. Oh, that's him. Oh, that's my bad. Yeah, that's me. Are you good? Are you good? <laughs> I, I, I didn't realize. So JD stands for Juan David or Juan David? David yeah. Wait, what, what, what you prefer, David or David? Juan David, yeah. Or if you you could say Juan David. I just feel like it's weird when people pronounce the Juan with like a uh -huh. special accent and then David <laughs> without it. <and> vice versa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it's because people aren't used to uh, like Spanish pronunciations. I feel like I feel like some people don't know that Juan is John. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like my name Joshua in Spanish. It's called Sway. Very, very like Jose Rico. I, I get suave. Yeah, big yeah. fan of Jose. Uh, is the other Sway here? Joshua, Joshua Fournier. I don't think we have anybody else in the. Uh, uh, anybody else in the Zoom? Do we? Do we not have any other performers? Man, it's not big. It smells good. I can tell you about my day. I tell you about growing up. Yeah, I'm growing up with a. Navajo grandmother. She was like an OG Navajo too. She uh, she like wrinkles on her face. Like, <laughs> why you gotta cook the loudest, the loudest uh, food? Yeah, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do that because you did the smoke. No. This is. Uh, I just. I'm just gonna roast you the rest of the time until Josh shows up. That's a gorgeous dog. I'm so jealous of that dog. Damn, that smells good. Uh, yeah, anyways, I was, I was telling the story. Hi, my name is Joshua. I'm Navajo. Uh, I grew up on the reservation. Uh, it's about the size of West Virginia. Very big. Grew up in Vanderwagon. My grandmother, she's OG Navajo. Her, her like, skin is cracked uh, and leathery from like being out in the sun. She used to wear these floral bandanas. She looked like a Navajo babushka. You know, she didn't speak that much English. I don't really speak that much Navajo. So our conversations were largely nonverbal. Uh, our conversations were like, I like, like I was a puppy and she was trying to teach me. 
you know what I mean? Like, like I would go around and like pick stuff up and then just like look at her for approval. And, and, and then she would give me a treat if I got it right. You know? She would smack my nose if I peed in the carpet. Uh, but you know, that's how you learn. That's how you learn. Uh, one time it was just me and her out at the res and uh, my mom and my sister had gone into town. I, I, she needed me for something. And so she invited me out. And as I get outside, I don't know what she wants, but she's in front of the sheep corral. Her, her skirt is blowing in the wind. And in her hand, I can see the glint of, of a butcher's knife. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys know, but there's not many things in this world that are more intimidating than a Navajo woman with a butcher's knife. After this, go ahead and Google Navajo woman butcher sheep and you'll see it is efficient my guys okay and <laughs> so I go out there and she gets across that she wants me to go and tackle a goat one of the goats out there and I'm on board because you know what fuck a goat fuck a goat they got devil's eyes and they're just smart enough to be assholes on purpose I am not a fan of goats I will punch a goat every time I see it in its face, all right? And then talk shit behind its back. Talk about how it gained 10 pounds over holiday, you know? So I get this little bitch ass goat in a headlock, take him to the ground, man. Dust coming up all around, you know? And, and then it starts making noise of that, that. And so I got it down. And there's definitely something happening behind me. And, and, and so I go over, I turn over to see what my grandmother's doing. And guys, I don't, I don't know how many of you have ever seen a goat get castrated three feet away from your own scrotum, but uh, <laughs> it sticks with you. It's a uh, haunting. It's haunting for sure. Uh, <laughs> we castrated seven goats that day, and I've been scared of women ever since. Okay, how you doing? My name's Joshua. My submittal to the Moth Festival, everybody. It's a narrative based festival. <laughs> thanks, 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 JD. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Well, I mean, we could wait around for Josh, but uh, he's, he's out on the res, so I don't know if he's popping in now. They, uh, the service out on the res is uh, sketchy. I don't know. Anybody else want to want to hop on and talk with me? Otherwise, I'm just keep, keep telling bad jokes. I'll tell stories all day. I'll tell stories all day. Got a white dad. Uh, I like having a white dad. It's a tip. It's great. Um, yeah. <laughs> having a white dad, great. Having a white dad when 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 you don't look like you have a white dad, best way to have a white dad. Because right? I definitely have white privilege. It's just a secret. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, like I've been to the ballet like seven times. That's, that's some white dad shit right there, for sure. Like, <laughs> like I, I, I've been to Europe. Uh, I went to prep school. Uh, I'm a huge douchebag. People give me the benefit of the doubt all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, my mom, she's Navajo, uh, uh, and when you're biracial, you, you definitely, uh, yeah, you, you, you gotta, gotta make sure that. You do some things right. Josh Forney, is that you? Hi, my guy. How are you doing? What's up, brother? Hey, man. I like, I like, you got the Asian eyes all out. Looks like you got a fresh cut. Dude, <laughs> dude, dude, <laughs> dude, dude, dude. Oh, shit. Look, it's TikTok famous. I'm trying to be like hey, you over there, bro. You TikTok now, bro. I thought you were an American. I thought you were American. I am an American, okay? My skin's red, my eyes are white, my balls are blue. You know what I'm saying? I'm patriotic to the end you know what i mean a grandfather fought in the war i don't watch anime that's how american i am <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy your grandfather fought in the war what side <laughs> you son of a bitch um, <laughs> where you at right now where are you coming where are you coming to us at um deep on the navajo res bro you know what i'm saying look at the, the plastic on the windshield on the window you think this is a joke Damn, yo, that's why you all got COVID right now, man. Shit, plastic on the. Nah, bro, this is the because it serves it serves two purposes. Number one purpose, it, it keeps the mm -hmm. cold out, and number two, it keeps the COVID inside, so that way you're sick. You know what I'm saying? You just it, you don't infect your your neighbors. You know what I'm saying? Freaking that COVID over your spam and eggs, my guy. That's, 
I yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, how you wanna do this? You you wanna go you wanna go solo? You just you yeah, I'm gonna let you I'm gonna I'm gonna put myself on mute and you can just go ahead be funny. I mean I mean look can you do that? As as you know, comedy kind of needs an audience, bro. So I mean, if you want, we could just talk. Speaking of, I I'm sure you've already heard the story, dude. That like, uh, the, before COVID, you know, we we used to tour and, and do a lot of shows in other states and stuff like that. And and being Native American and going to these places, you know, sometimes it can get dicey because you go to because <laughs> like primarily right now, my audience are like redneck towns that's that's my key audience right <laughs> i grew up in farmington i grew up in a racist town you know what it is and uh that's my audience right now so you know when i go to the shows you know i go to like texas like amarillo texas the first time i ever went to amarillo texas dude um dude thought i was japanese he's like you're the comedian I'm like yeah man my name's josh fournier and he's like are you japanese <laughs> I was like, no, my grandfather actually fought the Japanese in the war. You're welcome for your freedom, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I like how so, you saluted uh, him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're welcome, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because you get, look at that. Boom, straight, dude, you know? Uh, that's crazy. But yeah, man, this is, it, it's, it's weird. This is my first Zoom comedy thing of all time. And I honestly don't know how to act. So, you know, we can just, we can just go back and forth for a little bit for 15 minutes and just kick it, bro, you know? Have you been dating then this time? Have you, have you, have been I been dating? dating? No. Okay. So here's the thing I've tried, <laughs> I've tried, but this is how, you know, you're really probably not a good human being is that when girls swerve you during a pandemic. All right. Cause they usually Ooh. hit you with the whole, like, sorry, I was busy. Like, no, you weren't. Nobody's busy. <laughs> we're in a pandemic. <laughs> no <are> busy with, <laughs> were you busy with, unless you were busy trying to get toilet tissue, you weren't busy. <laughs> you know, what's I, crazy. Is, is, huh? is, 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 all these girls got their OnlyFans now, man. And you were like That's a first thing. mover on that. I was on OnlyFans before OnlyFans was cool. All right. I was slinging hairy hobbit feet to dudes <laughs> in Kentucky for money, but I did it for the culture. <laughs> all right. If a gentleman wants to send me $12 on OnlyFans to step in some maple syrup, some Aunt Jemima, I don't know what they're into. <laughs> they're weird. She's canceled. Who cares, dude? I'll do it. <laughs> They canceled her, but the guy's like, I want Aunt Jemima on your toes right now. And I'm like, all right, dude, you weirdo. Yo, that's problematic in like seven ways, man. <laughs> yeah, Aunt dude, it, isn't a thing anymore. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. I was like, that's how wild. But you know what? You know where it is a thing still? Here in, uh, uh, well, not here, but in Farmington, New Mexico. It's still a thing there. You can go to the dollar stores and get Aunt Jemima products still okay. They still have yeah. Sacred Land with a little Pocahontas chick on there. So that's cool. I want to get those because those would be relics. Yeah, dude. Well, like, I, I miss her. I miss her. Up here in Denver, she is fully off of this. She's fully That's, off of the butter. Oh, that hurts it, my soul. That hurts. Honestly, me. it's like when you're like on a Zoom call and the person like leaves and it's just like their like office chair just like standing there, <laughs> and like waiting for Pocahontas to come back, man. <laughs> come back, Pocahontas. Hey, at least Pocahontas. She probably. <laughs> I like to think she didn't get relocated. I like to think she's on her reservation helping her people out because that's what I've been doing. And that's why I really, she went really, to college, uh, man. That's just, huh? She went to college. She went to Fort Lewis, dude. She got yeah, a scholarship. She flew to Fort Lewis. Shout out. And now she's there hooking up with white dudes. Dude, my ex-girlfriend was so traditional native, dude, that she had like three white boyfriends. That's crazy. That's how traditional she was. <laughs> Yeah, why are we gonna throw them corn pollen up? <laughs> can we can we stop? How long are we gonna keep pretending? How long are we gonna keep pretending that these Navajo, these native girls, once they leave the res, they're like, nah, done with native dudes forever. I'm only hooking up with black dudes <laughs> and white guys. And you know what? I support that. All right. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Three, dude, I'm like good luck, Chuck. All right. Because once a girl dates me and she breaks up with me, it's off to the race. So she either gets married or finds her soulmate for real. Yo, man, put that in your OnlyFans. Yeah, dude, you want? Yeah, yeah. I'm the good luck Chuck. I'm the I'm the <laughs> I'm the good luck Chucky. All right, you hook up with me, you'll get hitched down right quick, you know. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is that two of my ex-girlfriends are now one's married to a black dude, and you know how excited I am for that because a little known fact. Well, I don't know. I don't know where everyone's tuning in from, um, but I'm assuming Denver. But here on the Navajo Res, as you know, uh, dudes can ball here. Like dudes right. can fuck. You know, they can ball. Dudes can ball here, but here's the thing. The only issue is that they're short. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yo, I encourage 
<laughs> traditional native girls start hooking up with black dudes because in two generations, bro, could you imagine we're gonna because it's gonna be a beautiful sight to see on the NBA. There's gonna be six rows all blanketed off, you know what I mean? Just little kids sitting there with the blankets because all the relatives were late because we don't show up for nothing on time. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's gonna be NBA live TV, and then the three rows behind the bench are gonna be <laughs> blanketed off with Pendletons and whatever else they may have you. There's gonna be a Shiprock Chieftain seat waiting there, you know what I mean? Because there's gonna be some there's gonna be a Yazi in the NBA in two generations. We're we'll calling it right now. LeBron James with good hair. Could you imagine LeBron James with great <laughs> hair? Yeah, yeah, with a braid, you know, just Ooh, dunking on dude. people. Are you kidding me? I'm talking Absolutely. three strand, you know what I mean? And Walking then every time he sinks a three, yeah. every time he sinks a three, Every time he sees two, three, his knees and like, and he's gonna be the sacred, uh, the, the 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 butter lady, and we're gonna be like, oh, we found her, and that's a callback. <laughs> he's just gonna be like on the cover of like 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 Bluebird. He's gonna be the new Bluebird, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No and every time he sinks a three throw, three free throw line, we're gonna get free whoppers at Burger King because that's how <laughs> that's how things work. Yeah. Blake's we're gonna reward. We're, we're gonna we're gonna reward native greatness with terrible food. <laughs> so yeah, Yo, you got a fresh day, man. How'd you, uh, how did you do that yourself? Like in a mirror? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. No, uh, <laughs> here's the thing is that like um, I didn't want to get it this short because now you see how big my forehead is, and it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? saying? Yeah. Like Navajos, we have the biggest reservation in the country. We also have the biggest forehead, but nobody likes to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think I'm wearing a beanie right now? You know. Uh, yeah, yeah I saw you hiding the grease. You know, it doesn't matter what else blizzard is still gonna happen. That's just now oh, you breaking up, man. You got that? You got that travel? You got uh, to sell you one service uh, out there, man. Lost it. I'm not. I'm not Wi-Fi on the reservation. Are you back? We're back. Yeah, we're back. Yeah, you got internet? You got a little hotspot? Yeah, I got. I got that. No, dude. This is just it, it's. If you get service, you get service, okay? Because we're on the reservation right now, and every time an Apache helicopter flies across, my ancestors <laughs> a get scared or b it interferes with the Wi-Fi. So it is what it is, dude. <laughs> well, Apache, you just start shooting bows at it now, <laughs> you know what I mean? Thunderbirds. No, nah. <laughs> dude, <laughs> we've offended every person in this. I don't know who's watching. Hmm. That, you, you know what? I, I, I'm actually pro-offense. You know what I mean? Like, you have to know where the line is, and the line is always moving. And, exactly. and not only that, but in terms of, like, like, like being truthful and, and learning, learning about things, uh, sometimes you have to be wrong. You know what I mean? And you have to get that push. Yeah. You know, when was the last time you offended somebody? Uh, today. <laughs> What'd you do? Because uh, I'd be talking spicy. All right, there is a there is a native influencer. There is a native influencer who everybody's familiar with, who will remain nameless, but we're beefing right now, okay? Because I called this dude out on a podcast, and somehow he heard about it, and now he's. I've got friends who are like, "Yo, look at what this dude's talking. Is he talking about you?" And I'm like, "This fool is acting crazy." Don't let my don't get it twisted. Don't get my don't let my charity work fool you. Okay, I'm still from Albuquerque, and I will still stab you. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You gotta honor your ancestors for sure. I will still, dude. They call dude other tribes called Navajos head crushers. You figure out why. <laughs> yeah, I like head crushers better than sheep people, man. Like, yo, dude. Yeah, yeah. I love how people are like yo Navajo people are not a war tribe. Excuse me, World War II, <laughs> the Pacific. You're welcome. Okay, but also all the surrounding <laughs> tribes had a nickname for us. They called us head crushers. Why? Because we didn't have tomahawks. We had rocks on sticks. Uh, you know what I mean? Mm. And we just headbang. That's why we love Iron Maiden so much. And it is oh, what it man. is. Go to any hardcore festival in Phoenix, Arizona. I guarantee 25% of the audience is brown and jizzy. When I when I first moved to Phoenix, I stayed there. Um, I met a dude from, what is it, Pennsylvania? And he was like, yo, I went to a Mayhem. This is when Mayhem Festival was a thing. And he was like, dude, like, I got into the mosh pit. And, like, he's like, I legit was scared because there was just – he was he was he didn't he was he, he put it nicely but i'm gonna put it to you blunt there were a fat out of shape sweaty native dudes who never got tired why is 
<laughs> just bodies that <laughs> bodies that look like fry bread dough before you make it. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just talking rolled up. All right. And for some reason, look, I even got it. Look at this. I got I look like a Neapolitan ice cream, brown, red, and then you don't want to yeah. see this, but this white part, dude. I look like my arm is a Neapolitan ice cream. You got chocolate, <laughs> strawberry, and vanilla, and it is what it is, dude. It is what it is, you know. <laughs> It is what yeah, it is. No, yeah, you look real pale. I look. I look. I look pale, pale. Yeah, mm-hmm. bro. You in the mountains. You, you, you kicking it with them. Hey, you kicking it with them. Uh, yeah, with them, with them Denver okay. hitters, dude. Yo, my best friend's a Jew. You know what I mean? Like that's just this is the way it goes, man. It's, uh... They call him the Hasidic hitter. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's liking that. He's, he's, like, he's smoking on a jewel right now. He's smoking on a jewel. Oh, he's smoking yeah. on a jewel. Yeah. Okay. That Hasidic, the that Hasidic hoagie. You know what I'm saying? I, just, uh, I just went public with my OnlyFans account. I'm uh, I'm I'm just doing pictures and videos of me cartwheeling. But we should we should. I was help. here's the thing. I was gonna follow you, but if I follow you, you're gonna see videos of me acting wild, dude. And <laughs> <laughs> follow me on TikTok first, and then I'll give you the OnlyFans link because my OnlyFans okay. is All right. cool. ridiculous. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna delete. I'm actually going to delete a lot of the videos off my OnlyFans because it is a little, yeah, you know what I mean? Hey, it is what it is. You know, I, I, that's how I'm, I'm trying to support small business, especially during this pandemic. I'm trying to make sure that these single moms have <laughs> yeah, money for their kids this Christmas. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you give me a TikTok link, I'll double tap. You give me your OnlyFans link, I'll tip. You know what I'm saying? We're all going through it. Unfortunately, I get to, you know what I mean? Dude, you know, you know who really bugs me are those guys who like become like OnlyFans raiders, like those dudes who rate OnlyFans, like it ain't worth it, bro. Save your money. She doesn't even show me up. Like, what the <laughs> dude? So <rude. laughs> Disrespectful, bro. Support small businesses. You know what I mean? I've gone to restaurants that were garbage, but I'll never make a ra- be like, yo, don't eat here, dude. The pasole, I think Rachel Ray cooked it. You know what I mean? That not no, yeah, no. Yo, sometimes people like to like like pasole a little dusty, man. I like that, you know. Who out there? I'm nah. from New Mexico, bro. No, nah, you come correct, all right. You can't come with no slack, Rachel Ray hitter. You gotta come correct with the pasole, or we're fighting. Cause we're New Mexico. New, New that's Mexico, all we like to do. New Mexico got a lot of good food. I hate smothered. I hate smothered green chili, though. You know what I mean? Like I like green chili. I like I like it on the inside. I love pasole. I love menudo. I want my burrito to be like dry on the outside, like crispy on the outside. That's how I grew up, man. I grew up, I grew up in you know the Sonoran Desert, you know, with that. Do you see me? Style. Do you see me flexing on you right now? <laughs> oh, is that what that is? Oh, I yeah. Thought, I you, no, I'm not having a stroke. I'm flexing on you because you keep this in the culture, bro. You de- <laughs> eat this in the culture. I will. I will disrespect I like the green chili. I just, like, let me choose how much green chili I want to put on my burrito, my guy. Bro, I'm gonna delete all the 303 off of my iPhone right now if you keep talking <laughs> spicy. <laughs> Let's make them girls go, wait, wait. I'm deleting all of that stuff off of my phone here in a little bit. I'll yeah, stop I'm listening to Huh? Desert. Nothing. Go ahead. What are you saying? Bro, all right. You, you keep like talking. It. You keep talking spicy, all right. You keep talking spicy, all right. Yo, I see the IG. I see the IG videos of you just like kicking a tree, man. That shit is intimidating, man. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> no, that's just what you do when you're when you have scrawny legs and no axe, and you gotta stay warm, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. How are you guys doing on firewood? You guys all you all straight up? Um, shout out to this girl. Well, she's definitely not watching this, but shout out to uh, my queen in San Antonio. She actually sent me uh, three like low uh, wattage heaters, and they work miracles. Because where I'm at right now, if you if you plug too many things in, it shuts off the electricity. So fortunate to have electricity, but it is touch and go. Dang. Sometimes, so oh, we're doing all right. Yeah, oh. I did. I I ran some wood to a, to the co talker on the other side of the mountain. He's very fortunate about that, but uh, yeah, don't tell my hood doing? friend, huh? How the elders doing? Everybody all right? Where you at? Not good, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, um, learned the other day that the hospital there's no more ICU beds on the res. So, but there's also two hosp, three hospitals out here. So, you know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm staying home. I really haven't been going anywhere. That's why I've been heavy on the OnlyFans. Huh? 
That's right. It gotta be. Yeah, but yeah, because like the Navajo Nation, like COVID funds, are uh, taking forever to get out. Like 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 super long lines. And the, like yeah, the no, well, I'm not getting any money. I'm sure. I'm sure whoever's sending those checks out have seen my Instagram and seen how much trash I talk. Uh-huh. I'm definitely disqualified from that. Because <laughs> yo, I I yeah, I'm I'm one of those people who like like the rest of these native influencers. They can't talk spicy like I talk spicy. But here's the thing: <laughs> native people don't really support me anyway. But it is what it is. I rep my culture everywhere I go. Okay, so when mm-hmm. I saw that people were standing in the in the in the in the snow. The first snow, the trying to wait for money, like I went on the attack, you know what I'm saying? And I was I was flaming people. And I like to believe I got some changes done. You know what I mean? I like to believe that I got some stuff flipped around, but also I could just be full of it. You know what I mean? I also make OnlyFans content, so you can't take anything I say very seriously. High and low, bro. I love it, man. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I miss comedy, dude. You know what I'm saying? I have, I can go to Phoenix right now. I could have been at the Tempe Improv tomorrow. But you know what I'm saying? It's still pretty dicey. I'm not comfortable going to Phoenix yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but I support my friends who do. I don't hate on anyone who does. Because it's definitely yeah. trying times right now. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know too many in the people in the Phoenix in the Phoenix scene. Like I know like Wolf, and I just know him because he's native. I've seen him on some like online shows. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, everybody else, yeah. And I'm from Phoenix. I didn't start doing comedy until I left. Like dead ass? No. Like like for real? Like like no joking? I think me. You and Wolf might be the only cats who do like actual comedy rooms, and we're not mm. doing like the yay who likes hickeys, you know, and basketball shorts. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and like I don't mean to talk trash, but I mean if, if some people that's that's their thing. You know, they like to do these native comics. They like to, you know, do the do the you know. Uh, I do. Yeah, the there's like a vein. Yeah, it's like it's like the funniest uncle. You know what I mean? But like there with it is, the, yeah. the, microphone yeah. there it is um we're supposed to be doing comedy we're just doing a podcast at this point <laughs> yeah i mean you got you guys you got like five more minutes left man my hey, guy i'm glad you're keeping time i'm glad you're keeping time because i'm definitely not keeping time here's the thing dude okay i'm in i'm in i'm, I'm near a racist town okay i want to go to this racist town dude give me the vaccine Give me the vaccine so I can open mouth kiss strangers again. That's all I'm trying to do, okay? <laughs> all right. There's some racist girls in my town, and I'm trying to get them to get drink catcher tet on their thighs, and that's what it is. <laughs> Can't offend Yo, me, give dude. Give me the vaccine so I can get pink eye. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> give me the vaccine so I can... <laughs> Oh, so I can get that fire water down under if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, why is it alcoholic down here? <laughs> yeah, why is it alcoholic down here? Dude, yeah, no. Yo, the reservation's wild. dry. <laughs> yeah, it's a dry, it's a dry county, but you know what I'm saying? Tell that to those people. I don't drink, I'm sober, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, when in Rome. You know what I mean? You have to try the Skinwalker juice if it's offered to you, okay? That's why they won't open it. That's why they won't open a Chick-fil-A on the reservation, because they give out free hand sanitizer in the bathrooms, and it is what it is. Chick-fil-A wow. would be the new hot nightclub on the weekends on the res. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dude, I've, I've, for sure. I've, only, I've only been performing for people who are probably going to cancel me in the future, but it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right, what man. It no. Is what it is. All right. Look, no, funny will save you, man. As long as you, as long as you stay funny, you, you'll you'll always be fine. I feel like that's what I'm saying. Yo, I'm out here delivering wood, water, and essential supplies to elders during the pandemic. And like the people who hate on me the most are the people who like they dress up, they put the handprint on your face. You know what I'm saying? They wear the turquoise, but like you'll fly to South Dakota to protest rocks. Like no, nah, cause we got old people dying in our neighborhood. <laughs> Stay here, hop out here, but they're like, no, nah, it, ain't, it ain't the hot thing to do right now. So nice. I stay talking spicy. I nice. stay talking spicy. Yeah, some of the, some of the loudest talkers be doing the doing the least. They sure. be doing nothing, bro. All right, fuck yeah. it. I know we're not yeah. supposed to cuss on this. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you good, man. Uh, cool, man. It's great to see you, Josh. Uh, love to see you. You know, post pandemic, see see how everything shakes out. Try to get on the road. I know, man. It's it's it's. I have dates lined up. I just I keep pushing them off because I still do do a lot of work with the elders and and you know the elderly in the community. So okay. I I'm trying not to risk it, you know, because I still do 
I'm in contact with a lot of them, but uh, I do have dates lined up. Uh, come January, dude, I'm 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 full sending. Phoenix is probably the first stop. Uh, Texas right after that. Um, my homie in Louisiana, he runs a show. They apparently have zero COVID out there because they're just doing shows, packed rooms always. So I might actually I go think, out there. I don't think that's quite the case. I think they're just like, we're okay it's a, it's with the COVID getting around. All right. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> go to any border town on the weekend. You'll see exactly what we're talking about. But yeah, bro. Hey, um, but until then, I'll be doing apparently Zoom calls uh for comedy and also doing tiktok so follow me on tiktok that's what our life is dude tiktok and zoom calls you know shout, shout out the shout out the socials right now my guy bro savage one on everything dude savage one on instagram savage one on tiktok you know what i'm saying um <laughs> Savage one on OnlyFans. If you really want to look for it, Savage one on OnlyFans. It's there. If you want to look at it, it's free. But you be prepared. You're just gonna see videos of yeah, yeah, degenerate stuff. Okay, but hey, hey man, Aunt Jemima syrup on on the feet, man. I'm all no, for that's it. that's those are those are request videos. That's not on the public page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, if we get enough, how many subscribers is it gonna take for you to put that on the public feed? I have 12 right now, and apparently that's all you need to be top 30% creators of all OnlyFans. Um, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to pop off on the hub. I won't say the full name because they get mad at you when you say the full name, but I'm trying to be number one on the hub because in Arizona and New Mexico, the number one category searched by women was Navajo for 2020. So your boy trying to get verified on the hub. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. I got so many titles lined up, you know what I mean? uh clumsy girl forgets her casino player's card you know what i mean uh <laughs> just all k's too k k k yeah 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 <laughs> anyway yeah follow me whatever man hey this was fun thanks it's good to talk to you man shoot i can't wait till we can start doing shows again sure. much love man jacob follow me on instagram you weirdo or on tiktok which one he has like seven of them all the right. famous one <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, I, I I think that's it. Say goodbye to Joshua, everybody. Uh, asking, uh, is there any other performers I want to perform at all? We all good? Somebody do some poetry, bro. I'm trying to get inspired right now. I'm going yeah. through it. Somebody, go, do, somebody do some dope poetry. What? Do some <laughs> dope poetry. I'm, I'm heartbroken right now. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get, uh, <laughs> Everyone do somebody do some dope poetry. I'm going through a heartbreak right now. I'm going through a breakup. Your boy's going through it. Okay. Yeah, My skin's red the color of passion. So I'm very sensitive. Okay. So if somebody could do some drop some dope bars on some heart. Uh, a tornado flew around here, dude. We'll see you later. before you came. Excuse <laughs> the mess it made to you. I'm calling I'm calling. It wasn't raining. Yeah, I, uh, I'm pissed, dude. I'm calling the cops. I'm out of here. Well, yeah. All right, we'll see you later, man. Good to see you. Yeah. Hi, guys. How you doing? My name is Joshua. The guy that just got off is Josh Fournier. Um, yeah. I, uh, this is Sacred Voices Open Mic. Um, let's see. Doesn't look like we have anybody else right now. 7.53, I can, I guess I could stretch for seven minutes. I guess I could get Josh on for another seven minutes. Say la vie. That's French for uh, unpretentious. Yeah, I uh, <clears throat> have a dog. Her name's Lola. She's uh, the best thing in my life right now. I just uh, want to get that out there. That's part of my brand. I'm trying to build a brand, all right? Part of it is being native, uh, community oriented, but also that I'm a, I'm a dog owner, you know? I voted to, to bring pit bulls back. I love a pit bull. Pit bulls are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful dogs. Um, I don't really understand why Mary Hancock uh, uh, like vetoed that, especially when there's such strong community support. It just seems uh, silly. Um, yeah, a lot of complicated things in the news right now, but just, it's, uh, it's a weird time. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I guess I could provide some levity. Levity, levity. Oh man, man, I'm trying, I'm trying to think about. I used to have one bit where I did sing Frank Ocean's "Thinking About You," and uh, and then like way too long, way too loud, and then as and then I would stop, and then I would just like look at everybody in the audience. I'd be like, "So I'm single." <laughs> It used to be like one of my biggest bits. I miss those. I miss those days when you could just be silly. Stefan, how you doing? Uh, I, I do not how to. I do not know how to say your last name, uh, so I'm not going to butcher it. I probably butcher your first name. It's just the way I go. Can you hear me? I I, I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I Kipasa uh, Larasa. I just want to make sure I wrote this. Yeah. Wow, that is a that is a library. That is a library behind you, Stephen. Great. Is that music or is that uh, is that books? Uh, I, I I still can't hear you, my guy. Uh, is it connected? Just gonna. I went to Fort Lewis. That's a free promotion for Fort Lewis right there. That's right. Tuition waivers for Native Americans. I still can't hear you. Uh, there it is. Hey, how are you doing, Stephen? Hello? Hey. Hello? Hi. All right. Yeah. Namaste. Namaste. My name is Joshua. Uh, uh, I'm hosting tonight. What, 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 what sort of work are you going to be performing for us tonight? Oh, maybe uh, three little poems. That's exciting. All right. I'm going to go take myself All right. out. Yeah, let me let's, let's get to it. Oh, me first. Okay. Um, well, first I have a, a poem called Saudi Arabia, because I lived there for a while. And so um, there's a couple things about Islam to say first. Uh, you're supposed to, uh, especially if you're a man, you're supposed to wash before each prayer, which is five times a day, or uh, there's also one in the middle of the night you can do optionally. Um, and especially in the early days of wisdom, sometimes people were traveling uh, like on their camel across the desert. And so an exception was made because they might not have water. And so they were allowed, and you're still allowed if you don't have water to wash with dirt or sand. And so this gave me the idea. Also, another uh, principle of Islam is that the world already submits to Allah, but um, only people do not. Now, I'm not a Muslim. I'm, I'm actually a Hindu, but I respect all religions, especially after having lived there, you know, and studied it. So I, I wrote this poem about the idea that sand is, um, is praying and submitting to Allah. So this is called Saudi Arabia. Sand is called to prayer and makes ablution as it must with dirt, with hands like hair. Passing through all windows, doors, and shutters, sand considers water a pollution. Sky a road, the wind a thobe to wear. Sand is one long trachea which utters cries. Its inarticulate locution summons everything into the air. Most effective when its message stutters, sand disperses with no diminution. On its blackened knees, sand bends to prayer, throws its forehead to the earth, and mutters. So that's the first one. Um, if you've ever been in a sandstorm, you know it gets through everything, comes through windows, everything. Um, the next one is called Spirit. We summon spirit but it will not stay. This presence is not ours, though we have bent it to us from the place where it was found, nor has it any name which we could say. Yet it visits us as though lament echoed, as if every wordless sound returned to us across a brief delay. Spirit, is that thing we always meant to be? but found too painful to surround. 
No wonder we do nothing but betray spirit. Something past all measurement, which stands precisely where there is no ground. Now this one is dedicated to the people in the future. And it's actually a phrase that Heidegger uses to describe the people in the future. And of course, he's, to, he's writing this in the 30s through the 50s. It, the, the title is The Ones to Come. The ones to come will have no need for prayer. Their spirits will ascend like smoke at night to track the constellations out of place. They will understand this pain we share, all this suffering we call all right, as the sacred in its deepest trace, healing in some way we do not dare. They will sow their wounds with starlight while the atmosphere bleeds into space. Whereas we can merely point and stare, the ones to come will know how to ignite infinity in one intense embrace. One more. These are all 12 line, perfect rhyme, metrical poems, sort of in iambic pentameter or um, uh, trochaic. This last one is um, how to pray. Start by speaking only with your spirit. Silence all the rest. Your heart, your head. Stand inside that lake of tears you cry and begin the music as you hear it. After all these years, those people dead, tracking joy with sorrow as your guide, do not be afraid. You must not fear it now. It is not death that people dread, but being. That is what you held inside even from yourself, lest time come near it. Speak as if each word were what you bled. and explain how easily you die. And that's it. Heavy material. Thank you very much. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, you want to talk a little bit about your background? Uh, how, do you, how do you come to have such, such complicated things to, to get out there? They are difficult. And, and on a first reading, audio only, I, I imagine they're, they're not easy. Um, they're all um, in a book I have called Rocks Full of Sky that's on, you know, Amazon and all those places, you know. Um, I'm, I'm 64 and um, I've done a lot of different things. I've worked in data processing and gotten laid off. I've taught uh, high school and college and I taught um, adult men English in, in uh, Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia. And I went to... Um, uh, Nepal and the Philippines and uh, Italy. So I've been around a little. Um, and uh, so I, I try to value each culture. Each culture thinks it's right and in its own way, you know, it, it's it sure it is and we should respect that. Um, and uh, I used to write kind of weird when I was like, you know, 19 and 20 and I remember somebody saying, I, I think it's really good, Steve, but I, I don't have any idea what it means. <laughs> and so I tried really hard to um, write as understandably as the material would allow. 
but it's difficult material. But I'm trying hard to say it as simply as I can. But I am dealing with, you know, hard philosophy. But so I, I have a book about the national parks of Utah, Arizona, Colorado, and New Mexico, and places like that, like Monument Valley, and um, also spiritual things, and um, and other stuff. So I'm I'm trying to follow in the footsteps of you know great poetry and, uh, but doing it in in traditional which is very odd now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been married a few times and you know, it's, it's hard, I'm, not, I, I'm uh, single now. And uh, I got two kids and uh, uh, I'm pretty happy, you know, I'm doing all right. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah, you said a lot of things there. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of different ways with that. But the, the idea of trying to explain something complicated simply, like it's really, like you really have to understand it, right? I mean, that's that's the ultimate understanding yeah. is, is saying it simply, um, or at least uh, in a way that's digestible uh, for people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. Uh, so, that, did you still perform these uh, the live then? Well, it's a while ago now. Um, I, I used to live in New Mexico until about twenty-three years ago, and you know, I was young and I did a lot of poetry readings there. Um, I used to have my stuff memorized, you know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is actually in the book because the book has 40 years of poetry in it. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the, I live in Evergreen, Colorado now, and um, it's kind of far to go down to um, the poetry readings in Denver, you know. Um, sure. But uh, virtual makes a lot of sense, you know. Although a lot of the virtual readings are like local in their own way, like, you know, they're like uh, for they're some local. place. Yeah, yeah, they're like for some like bunch of poets, like the Boulder poets or or some place in New Jersey or something. Even if it's virtual, it's like for those poets. It's funny. But um, yeah, I, I like to read. I, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I wish I knew how to read. You know, it's been tough being a leader of most of my life. But, you know, I've, I feel like I've, I've made it uh, pretty far. Uh, oh, you'll be good. You're, you're fine, I bet. You're not shy. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm very good at, uh, at being the most obnoxious guy in the room. I feel like we're in a country where that, uh, that's very valued and, uh, and that gets honored in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, that, that, thank you very much. Uh, do you go by uh, Stefan? No, <laughs> no. It, it's actually Stephen with even when you say it with the PH, like there used to be a guy, Stephen Stills, a rock star, you know, and he spelled it like that. Stephen you know, Stills. Crosby, yeah. Stills, Nash and Young. Have you ever heard of them? No. <laughs> Sorry. They were at Woodstock. The Grateful Dead next? Like... <laughs> well, yeah, that's the same generation. I saw the dead. You saw them? They have, yeah, well, they got Santa Fe. Now. I feel like they sound way better. Who? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's just a joke. Yeah, you got really mad right now, though. <laughs> yeah, we dropped out a second. Yeah. Oh, but, oh well, I, I made a very great joke. Uh, it's at the time of the show. Yeah, I like the dead, but, you know, they, they had a few good songs, a, a lot of terrible songs. They weren't so much great musicians as they had a great lyricist, Robert Hunter. None of them wrote lyrics. They just wrote. It was really an interesting idea. Have a pro do their lyrics, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that very jazzy, very like improv -y, right? That, that was my understanding. I'm not... Yeah, a lot of times they were very long jams, you know, maybe not so good, but, you know, some of it was good songs, you know? The concert I saw, if anybody there wasn't tripping, it's because they were like kids, you know? Yeah. I saw yeah. people dancing in a, in a papoose, you know, like under five years old, under four years old dancing um, in a papoose and I was like 25 and I saw people dancing who were like a hundred, you know? <laughs> now tell me what other group would have that happen? Somebody under four years old dancing and somebody over a hundred dancing. Uh, Catholic church, just kidding. Well, yeah, but you know, I mean with good music, you know, now I respect <laughs> the church, but you know, I respect all religions, you know? Yeah. I wish no, they could no. remember all the stuff they did though. Yeah, uh, you, you know what? When you're a thousand year old organization, you, know, you can be forgetful. I, I don't know. Why am I defending the Catholic Church right now? Uh, Stephen, yeah, you're great. Thank you so much. 
Uh, Thank you, Joshua. Yeah, I think you're you're our um, ultimate performer. I think uh, there's nobody else. I think this has been another successful. But don't you have anything? Why don't you read a psalm or something? What, what do you like, Josh? It doesn't have to be yours. You want me to say something? All right. You read something. Show me how your voice works. I'll, Paul, I'll, read a, a, a quote I from. I got, a, I got a poem locked, loaded, and ready for you. Ready for this? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. I, <laughs> out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole. I think whatever gods there may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I've not winced nor cried aloud under the bludgeonings of chance. My head is bloodied, but I'm bowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms, but the horror of the shade, though the menace of the years finds me and shall find me unafraid. For no matter how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. That's right. Yeah. I'm the captain. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's, a po uh, it's called Invictus. Nelson Mandela used to say that every day for two decades when he was wrongfully imprisoned, uh, I say it when a girl won't text me back. Well, well, two things in it, chance and God, plural, uh, agree with my Hinduism, you know? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I didn't write it. I, sh I, sh I should put that Yeah, out. but it's you did it, though. You did it with verve, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a joie de vivre that, uh, that is... Uh, I think uh, you're a great interpreter. That's wonderful. I'm having brunch. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to... Uh, you want to throw yourself on mute? I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, put, a, put a little bow on this. My phone is running out of uh, battery. Thank you guys uh, for coming to another Sacred Voices open mic. I uh, really appreciate you. Sacred Voices really appreciate you. If you want to support the cause, we're on Venmo and at Patreon, we got workshops. Uh, we got special content that's on, on Patreon. Uh, coming up with a lot of cool things. This 2021, I, I really believe uh, we're going to uh, just get involved in the community in a real way, and develop some real things. Anyways, thank you and uh, good night, good luck. That's what we said.